Hi, Charlene. <laughs> <Thanks too. laughs> so in this video, I want to just go over how to deal with a injury uh, that's a bleeding, that's a small wound, uh, and a couple quick little the little tricks, I guess, that you hear about people using. For example, crazy glue and a quick clot. You know, and then of course I told you about honey. So the general idea is, and here's med tape. So that's basically what you see here: 3M micropore medical tape uh, and this stuff is like a basically a, a paper like um, dressing a wound dressing and then um, they have you, know, you hear about uh, telfa pads like a band-aid you know how the that pad that's uh, the little white part you know the, the pad itself that goes over the wound is there because it doesn't stick to your skin so that if, for example if, if when the wound you know finally uh, clots and stuff you don't end up pulling that clot out it doesn't stick to that wound um, but the thing is about band-aids, they're honestly useless because they are limited by this, the, uh, by size. Like you have to have a bandage per type of wound size. It just gets kind of silly. I mean, you take this stuff and no matter what length the cut is, or you know, you could just fix it. And plus you can even do the method of taking strands and, and you know, making strips across to, to close, to tie it, pull it together, or you could wrap even around your entire arm. Um, so this is more versatile. First, Warncliffe's. Uh, I want to say that I like Warncliffe's because of this. They're very functional blade design. I mean this is why I can understand now like why uh, uh, Terzula, you know, he likes this and I and I feel that, that I, underst I understand that like you know you a Warncliffe is a very functional blade shape to use uh, in a, any kind of a, just various settings but a pointy Warncliffe like this modified Warncliffe can get underneath that bandage easier and, and take it off and uh, now the main thing is okay. So you know, um, you know, you start getting out and about. You know, you 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 do woodwork. You're gonna get hand injuries. You know, you preferably you have a glove, but you know, that may not be always. And so you know, you want uh, you know, to realize you want to know what to do in the situation. You know, and so but this here is to show like okay. So I hope no one's too like uh, freaked out. But okay. When it's bleeding, super glue won't uh, work. The blood will keep making the super glue. Uh, it'll like the super glue will bond to the uh, blood and it'll just fall off. It just doesn't work. Does super glue work to seal a wound? Oh yes, definitely. Uh, we're talking like it'll bring you back to like 89 percent back to normal. You, you're fully functional again. The trick is though, when it's bleeding, you gotta get to stop bleeding. Of course. How can you do that? Okay. Well, first, first obviously you could elevate it. Elevate the wound above your heart because gravity will pull the blood away from the wound. Second would be pressure points. Uh, the artery for your arm is here, and uh, you know it's, it's in here, and the bones right here. If you push on this, it'll limit your the blood flow to your arm. Uh, and if you can't obviously hold it, perhaps you want to take a a strap of some sort and uh, uh, tie that. Now, quick clot. People may have never used quick clot, so. For those individuals who, first of all, is quick clot is amazing stuff. It's like one of the best creations ever. Two versions, standard or antibacterial. Antibacterial basically is, is like Neosporin slash quick clot. Definitely just go, you know, spend the extra 10 bucks, get the good stuff. And uh, they may not have ever seen quick clot looks like this. And this is Mel's little pack. She's, it's falling apart because the way she has it. Go figure, right? But this is what it would look like. It's like basically a little tea bag. And inside are the actual little quick clot balls which look like this okay and basically what you can do is you don't have to use the entire pack actually really uh, I would say ever um, I mean if you know if, you're, if it's like you know a big wound and you're like hey you know what whatever okay but if you're trying to be resourceful what I did you know I took maybe just a small you know three or four or five beads and just Basically, literally, you know, you got blood on it, it's going to stick, so you just stick it onto the wound and it'll just stick onto it like that, you know, and uh, really just, um, you know, one bead, you know, just draw a little line, like, you know, you know, it's like, like playing crafts, just cover that wound with those beads, and in less than, like, what, took, like, what, three minutes with pressure, you know, not even, maybe, maybe three minutes, uh, the bleeding has stopped. Then, at that point, you can apply crazy glue. 
Now, if, for example, you don't have crazy glue, for example, you know, does honey really work as a dressing? Yes. You apply it, honey is antibacterial. It turns into hydrogen peroxide. It'll clean out the wound, and then when you wrap the med tape over it, you, it's basically a telfa pad. It's basically a telfa dressing, uh, uh, that medical dressing. So you don't really need, I mean, this is a sugar source too, so just go for the honey. Now, it works. Now, the thing is, some people are like, oh, well, you know, they buy those pre-dressing pads underneath to put underneath. I'm like, man, are you guys thinking? Look, if you don't want the pad, if you don't want the, this uh, tape to stick to you, to you okay? Uh, to your wound. You could just do this. You see, the sticky side's facing towards us, away from the wound, and then apply over that. Like, <laughs> and then bam, now it's not gonna stick. Med tape is really good stuff because it can, you can just tear it without uh, cutting it. Note though, get in the habit of when you're done using it, to curl over the edge or just jack up the edge right here because it does, um, it's hard to see. Believe it or not, it's very hard to even feel because it's kind of thin. And of course, the main reason why med tape is because it's breathable. Uh, now, for example, let's say, for example, if it gets wet, you're gonna need to keep changing your dressing. Let's say, for example, you needed something strong, a way to make sure that this stayed on, and we're talking better than the Band-Aid. The next best thing would be tenacious tape or ultra strong repair tape, which is basically like a uber version, I guess, of you could say of a of a duct tape. This stuff is expensive, but well worth it. It rolls up into a bundle like this, comes packaged like this. You can't roll it up tighter, or you'll affect the uh, the sticky. So you'll jack it up. So don't do that, or you make a mistake. Don't try to get make it more compact. It stays like this. You get a small amount. This can repair, of course, a tent. It's completely waterproof. You can repair clothing. It's basically like nylon in structure. Let's see. It looks, but it just looks like this, you know. Camera may not pick it up that well, but the thing is, let's say for example, you you got a, you know you you have a blister on your ankle, okay. If you apply ten tape directly to the wound, it will definitely stick. You know, of course, if you apply hydrogen peroxide, you know it's it's. I would still first wrap it with this, you know, um, you know either do what I just did here or use the honey then do what I did. But then if you are worried about in terms of like for example, you need. To keep moving, you need that uh, wound to be strong. You need some skin there. This stuff kicks the ass out of band-aids. Band-aids are complete junk compared to this. Just, just try. Use this, and it's like, I mean, heck, if you didn't want, you could protect your hands. This stuff is so durable. You could run with it while having shoes scrape against it. I mean, it just, it is durable. It is. If you want a waterproof bandage, and and again, this is flexible because you have length to work with. Uh, it's a, it's a roll rather than some, you know, stupid little one patch. You know, you can use this for multiple purposes. So it's like duct tape, but better. So there's that. Now the whole super glue thing, say for example, now you have a chance, you, you, know, you clean off everything, you know, stop bleeding, you, you've had a chance to, you know, uh, you know, get generally clean. You can see this wound is open. I know, gross, right? First, those little squeeze tube ones that are one-time uses, you're just wasting all of your resources, you know, you're carrying a bunch of little stupid little applicators. The ones you see at Home Depot in those little plastic, buy more than one pack. Here's the pen, do not get this because, yes, you see there's blood on it. Yes, this will work and hopefully not jam, you know, so you can re keep reusing it. That's what we thought, but then what happens when you have a wound, you have to push and push this tip in for a glue to come out and you're pushing it on your wound. That does not feel good. The best type is this kind. If you see this, it's always sold out at supermarkets. That has a little needle. It comes like this. You, you, usually this top part is there and it's solid and you have to, you know, this comes separate in here. So when you open it, don't, don't let it drop out. And what you'll do is you will take this little needle, stab a hole into it, and now you have, and this is a, a consistent way to reuse it, one pouch, one bottle of super glue and make it last. The super glue does literally instantly bond it. You, if you touch your, Two pieces, if you touch two sides of your skin, for example, your thumb to your, your whatever, you know, your thumb to your pinky, you are going to have uh, a funny day, you know, uh, pain in the butt. But you can see here, it's applied. And, uh, you know, this is nice, right here like that. And so this doesn't get all over the place. If it does clog up with the tip, you can just cut the tip off. See, here's a little bit loose. We've been, we've been using this a lot, but um, we pack like two at minimum on us all the time, along with two quick clots. And you can see it dries. You know, don't don't test it like that unless you know. But okay, see it's dry pretty much. Uh oh, you see. Okay, so let's wait for it. Okay, you see. I'm. I know, right? Yikes! No, it, it's fine. 
it will instantly bond it. Because if you guess you you know you, you can see it. It literally is a instantaneous skin. And uh, if you have to keep working, if you need, you know, especially if you just want that bleeding to stop instantly and seal that wound, that's it. Seal that wound with that super glue. Uh, apply some med tape or something. Put on that tent tape, and you have. And you're back to 100% with that temp tape on it. You won't even. It doesn't even feel. I'm. I'm fine. It feels fine. I mean, that one went deep. Okay. <laughs> that one. Uh, that one specifically. We were. We were practicing reverse grip, and it. And it, and it shot back up and cut me. Uh, I hate reverse grip. I hate reverse grip. But for you know, practice sake. Okay. Med tape. Tenacious tape. Basically versatile. It's versatile band aids. You know, no matter the wound size. You know, tough a pad or not. You know, flip it over. I mean, let's say you had a long gash. Make a long strip facing away from you. Then wrap it up. You know, pick little strips. You know, stick it. Stick strips. You know, like a little cross patterns like that, right? Then let's say, for example, you want that wound to remain. Right now, it, it may. If it gets wet, of course, that's not good. And the tenacious tape is waterproof, but it won't stop water from being underneath it. You know, your skin is porous. But let's say, for example, you want that wound to be solid, and you want to be able to keep moving if your skin not pull apart. You know, I mean, we're literally talking back to functions so you could work and do what you gotta do, and you know, get through whatever emergency you have. The tenacious tape is like the uber bandage. It's ridiculous, you know. And uh, and then they both provide a variety of sizes that you, of wounds you could deal with. And um, you don't always have to use one resource, but you know, all the time you don't have to use them always combined as just a simple band aid. Um, even gaping, you know, we're talking like this. This is general wound uh, care with, within a small amount of medical supplies. Uh, this is what is in my EDC and, and stuff, and so um, I hope this helps. And you see now, my finger is back to where I can, like, you know, you know, I don't mind. It's not, you know, I wish I could. Let's see here. Okay. That hurts a little bit. The point is, you know, we're talking just slight pain, but you're not an open wound. I mean, I wouldn't push my luck. I would wrap it with med tape, and if I was in this extreme situation, I would wear the tenacious tape over it. So that's that, and uh, thank you. Once the packaging is compromised, you know this is waterproof packaging. You don't have to worry. But once you've opened it, you know, you're gonna need a pouch. Mel uses this stupid sandwich bag, but I don't know where her her, her real Coughlin's waterproof. Now the Coughlin's waterproof is water resistant. That waterproof thing is basically them being crooked. Uh, yeah, sorry Coglin, but just tell the truth, it's water resistant. There's no way you can submerge this water. We've tried holding water in it. Uh, if, you long, if you hold it upright, it's waterproof. If you hold it like this, it'll leak out. But uh, you can see here, it's tearing. But this is now after uh, close to more than four months of everyday carrying it, uh, using it to open up. Originally I had my tools in here because I didn't want them to, uh, to get rust on them or get wet in my bag. But you see, uh, because honey in one of those little jars will still possibly, it still kind of leaks, seeps out. Better put it in here. You see I have that pill fob that's supposedly waterproof, but supposedly. I would rather go in there and wrap that with some uh, duct tape. But inside is charcoal caps. And of course the, my med tape is in here. You know, what you kind of want to do, keep your med tape a little bit nice. It's not so much your germ contamination, more just, well one, if it gets wet, it's, it's, it's kind of done for. And two, it's, uh, it's kind of sticky, gets dirty, so I put that in here. And then ultimately, if you do use your quick clot, you can put it in here and, and you know, try to roll it up so that the beads don't keep falling over. But you got to keep that. That's a reusable resource. You know, you can make it last. Um, I definitely do suggest these cogging wire pouches. You know, our, my experience with them has been good. They're good quality. They they are strong. They last. They don't tear. This is a good good thing to have. And well, here, let me just show you what I'm talking about. So this won't be surprised, you know, when you're fumbling around, whether it be in the dark and you're bleeding or and you're like, oh my gosh, you know, time for first aid. Uh, when you open it, okay, open it like I just did, you know, like this, because you can see in here is the little piece that's ready to fall out, you see? You know, you get everything in one spot, perhaps, okay? Your quick clot, I and mean, if you want your med tape, you know, if you want your tenacious tape in there, I mean, you can cut down the size, make it flat strips, but like I said, I'd like to keep it as a roll. You have all this stuff in here, okay? ready to go you know let's say for example there's an emergency and the, the sprinklers go off you know uh, the fire sprinklers go off you know your gears getting soaked and stuff you know and then someone gets an injury or you get an injury and later you have you don't have an antiseptic around you know it's like what are you gonna do you know you need to keep this stuff dry and protected you need to keep uh, if you do use your quick clot you need to be able to to protect it from you know from getting wet because now that's open and stuff okay last final note too uh, though you see this one right here 
screws up on the top, which is handy because then you know you can use the full depth. Make sure that these little pill fobs have flat bottoms so they're not rolling all over the place. These are uh, uh, these are made of Delrin, Delrin, which is like a hardened nylon. Uh, same stuff that you know they use on like ball detent sometimes on certain uh, knife makers knives like uh, Mr. Thomas's stuff uh, and then you see this this is a synthetic material I see here's wire caps inside this one water pills the point is this this is by going gear I apologize going gear but you know what you need to stop selling this you know completely all together don't buy this this shit is horrendously crappy okay it, it jams and this is not my first one you can tell this is worn and used actually, I actually have another one that I think in the previous video I had shown with cut marks all across it and I tried hammering it it's made out of aircraft aluminum but it jams it just their their uh, threading is just improper I have more than one of these different sizes of theirs they all jam your contents may possibly get jammed in there and you won't be able to get it out you'll be praying to God that you can get it open either go for the Delrin because it is somewhat of a synthetic material that's not impossible to break or go for the ones that I was using so far, no problems, which come from REI. These Delrin ones here are used by the, the government, so, you know, take that as a hint, something that they've encountered that, you know what I mean, perhaps other people have, don't realize through use.